Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. Experience have joined the advising of the economic community of West African states on the dangers of using military might to suppress this coup in Niger Republic. They claim dialogue remains the best way out of the impasse, insisting that deploying troops to fight the military junta would rather compound security, social and economic challenges in Nigeria, Niger, and the other neighboring countries. ECOWAS had last week issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Niger, uh, Niger Junta to return power to deposed President Mohamed Bazoum, or it would deploy military force. A social political activist, Madi Shehu, joins us now to discuss the mounting opposition from the north to ECOWAS using force in Niger and how best to handle the crisis in the West African country. Good afternoon. Great to have you on Arise News. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. So, Ms. Mr. Shehu, we know, we have seen over the course of time, historically speaking, the results of uh, invasions or uh, uh, foreign powers helping out uh, other sovereign nations in order to solve their own uh, regional issues. Libya and Iraq are just two of those examples, and it ended uh, quite devastatingly. Um, what do you see as the most reasonable way to handle the situation as it is right now. We do know that there's going to be a meeting of ECOWAS uh, on, on Thursday, this emergency meeting. We know the deadline has passed. What, what are the options here? Well, I think the first option is if only if only a cause had become prisoners of history, they would have acted differently. A prisoner of history is that person who learns lessons from history. If only they recall what happened in Iraq, what happened in Bosnia Herzegovina, what happened in Somalia, what happened in Libya, in Afghanistan, and the devastating effect of interference into the internal affairs of a country, they would have acted differently. Rather than being prisoners of history, they opted to become prisoners of geography, where they feel they can look at a map, dissect that map, and cherry pick. ECHO was cherry picked and made Niger Republic a victim. Rather than looking at the other countries, there are four or five other countries that are under military rule now. When they took over their countries, ECOWAS was not in slumber. They were not sleeping. They were well alive and active. They looked away because there was no clear vested interest around to protect. But with Niger, America is visibly interested. With Niger, UK is an interested party. With Niger, they can split they can spit fire for them to protect America and the UK. And they are making the biggest mistake of their lives. Let Thursday come. Let Ecowas move their own troops to decimate, to obliterate, and to destroy Niger. And they think other countries are going to just fold their own arms. They will not fold their arms. They are going to fight back. 
and they are underwriting the war in the manner a camel underwrites scorpion. Ask anybody who knows the desert very well. <clears throat> the smallest insect that gives camel the biggest headache in life is the scorpion. The moment a camel sees a scorpion, it runs like hell because the scorpion kills the, 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 the camel in spite of the size. In this case, Nigeria is the scorpion. Echoes will be the camel. It will just be a matter of days and time. In international politics, you don't cherry pick what you want to destroy. You don't cherry pick. They are cherry picking on Niger. And it is an avoidable, an avoidable blunder. Here is a country, Nigeria, that has multitudinal, multidimensional, endless social, political, economic, and all other problems remaining unsolved, still counting. People are living in abject poverty. You don't even have any money to pay areas, no money for infrastructure, no money for this, no money, and you think you have money to lead a war because other countries in ECOWAS don't have the money. Nigeria will fund this war, and Nigeria doesn't have the capacity to fund this war. Duly noted, Mr. Shehu, of course, you, you stating that Nigeria doesn't have the, the capacity to, to fund this war. Speaking of Nigeria, one of the questions that we'd like to ask you is why the northern part of Nigeria, why northerners are vehemently against military operations in this Niger coup. Could you give us some insight on that? It's not only the north. Get the demography very well. Go to the Niger Republic. Get the demography of Nigerians that are staying in, uh, in Niger Republic. There are houses, Yorubas, Igbos, Fulanis, Kanuris, Birams, Ganawuris. Every tribe in Nigeria has a representation in, in Niger Republic. Therefore, don't look at it as a, as, as a northern affair. It's not a northern affair. Maybe predominantly northerners are there, but there are so many other ethnic tribes of Nigerian extraction that are living in Niger, I believe in Niger, they have married there, they have invested there. Therefore, attacking Niger is not only attacking the north, it's attacking the entire Nigeria. Maybe that is another way of saying that uh, maybe Tinubu dreamt in the spirit of uh, Gideon Oka, who wanted to excise the entire north out of Nigeria. Let him decimate the entire north. And let's, let, let, let's see what he's going to get out. If he is not careful, he will lose more than a course. If he loses more than a course, he will lose Nigeria. There is no way he can go to a war in Nigeria involving more than 50 million people. And you think you can just look away, you go and sleep, and you sip some tea and feel comfortable and order a military escarchy into Nigeria. Let him go ahead and do that. We are waiting for him to do that. We are not afraid of that. Let him attack Nigeria, please, yesterday in a manner of speed, not even today. Let a course on Thursday order for a military invasion of Niger. Not Thursday, but please today on Tuesday. We are waiting for it to happen. We hope not to. It's the proverbial uh, rock, uh, rock between a, a hard place. In, in one situation, we have a country like Nigeria that isn't completely politically stable in and of itself. And then we have uh, another country right next to it. Well, a bunch of countries that have uh, military juntas who are at the helm and they seem quite uh, politically unstable as well. Military governments. Um, Right now, it seems like President Tinubu has a lot on his plate. He must be extremely stressed out. Uh, how heavily does uh, his credibility hang on how he handles this uh, Niger situation? Well, already, even before the Niger situation, he has credibility issues surrounding his passing, his personality, his genealogy, his political affiliation, his votes, his declaration. This is enough baggage for him. Now, on his own, he elected personally. He elected personally, and he invited stress and place on his head. Unfortunately, he doesn't have to the head to shoulder that tension, to shoulder, the, shoulder that stress. If you remember, <clears throat> there are two rivals in Arrow of God. One of them is Umwaka of Idmili. The other one is uh, Ezulu of Ulu. The two of them have been at loggerheads. They have been fighting. And in trying to paint the scenario the way it is, Achebe did a proverb, which I love always, that 
I prefer to deal with somebody who calls for war and put his head. I prefer to deal with people who throw a stone up there and put their head to receive it than somebody who calls for war and when it comes, he trembles and passes a premature shit. This is a war that Tinubu cannot afford. Physically, psychologically, intellectually, militarily, the capacity is not there. I think he is using this war as an alibi. As what? As, 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 as a cover. To do what? To ensure the war comes between Nigeria, Equus, and Niger, and then that will make him invoke a constitutional provision for emergency rule. That will not happen. Nigerians are much, much wiser. We have seen other military, just like you said, in other military, and other countries where military are, they are stable. They have no business going to Niger. If the choice of Nigerian people to assage for their own frustration is a military rule, and they have welcomed it, so be it. Where was ECOWAS when other countries were being taken over by military? Where was America? Where are the UK? Where are all these uh, pretenders of democracy? Where were they? If military rule is an option to irresponsible leadership, to fraud in governance, to betrayal of trust, to cherry pick of enemies, so be it. Mr. If Shehu. civilian president don't like coup, they should, if civilian president don't like coup, they should be democratic, they should be responsible, they should be responsible, and they should be answerable. Short of that, coup will always be an option for people who are aggrieved. Noted. We, well, of course, we'll have other elements to explore with you. But I would like to go back to some of the statements that you've made here. You mentioned that um, if the president is not careful, he will lose more than ECOWAS, he will lose Nigeria. And when referring to the president exploring military options, you stated, and I quote, we are waiting for him to do that. Um, so I'm just wondering, when you say you're waiting for him to do that, what reaction, since yeah. you're also a political activist, what reaction are you, do you have in store if should he choose to explore the military option? When Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, the next three hours, the president of the U.S. then, George Bush Sr., went on the air and said, this is my last message to Saddam Hussein. Get out of Iraq or you lose more than Iraq. He refused to go out, and he lost Iraq. If Tunibu decide to go and invade, along with ECOWAS, to invade uh, Niger, he will lose more than ECOWAS, because definitely we are going to the polls anytime, any day, anytime soon. We'll go back to the votes. We'll go back to the polling stations. And that is when Nigerians will realize that they have been called open in the past. Be wary, be careful, be aware of a Tinubu presidency. They didn't hear. Now we are seeing the manifestation of absolute failure and incapacity, inability, and lack of experience. Only an inexperienced president, barely three months in an office, can begin to think of war. Therefore, our option, violence is not an option. Our option are always, under democracy, our voters' card, our voices, our communication our resolve to work in team and ensure that people who are bloodthirsty, who cannot go to the blood bank and get their blood, rather they want a fresh blood, will not govern Nigeria, will not preside over Nigeria, and will not continue to decide the fate of Nigerians. Already it's a country where everybody is on his own, everybody for himself, survival of the fittest. The devil take the Hindu most. People are angry, they are hungry. Businesses have been crippled. Relationships have been destroyed. And yet under this terrible situation, somebody is thinking of war. Perish that thought of going to war. But for war, let him go to war. In war, there, is, there are multiple casualties from both ends. Only God knows who are going to be the casualties of the war between Nigeria. In fact, it's even between Nigeria because Nigeria will sponsor this war. Either by getting loan or by mortgaging anything. Other equals countries are gasping. They are economically dispossessed. They are down. They are below zero line. Let us see how under this situation he will go and borrow money to fund a war, a white color war, a war of emotions, and, and a, a war that will take him nowhere. And a war that is, is sure to create havoc within our continent, uh, not just the Western region, extensive, but all through. Extensive havoc.
And we extensive havoc. And as students of history, um, you can enlighten us some more about this. But uh, you were speaking about who will foot the bill for the war. We're still paying for our very valiant efforts in Sierra Leone and Liberia, in which Nigeria did shelve most of the cost for that. We do know that there is a cost of living crisis that is biting us uh, quite severely, as many as are clamoring for palliatives. But I want to move away from that and ask about the uh, intervention of foreign powers still more on being a, a student of history. Historically speaking, we have seen this happen in many regions. Um, right now, it is a power play between uh, France and Russia, it seems. We know that the former French colonies are super annoyed with, their, uh, with France. They don't want anything to do with them. We've seen them expel them over the last couple of months. And here comes Russia, who is fighting its own war and creating havoc, uh, internationally speaking. Um, we have the Wagner troops who have decided to help liberate uh, Niger. In such situations where uh, people of a different skin color or a different uh, background and different heritage come to liberate us, we do know that it ends uh, not always the way that we plan. Can you speak about Russia's, uh, uh, Russia's role in uh, the Niger war and also France as well? It's not uh, a fight between France and Russia as such. There are three parties versus a party. Proxies. The first party is America. Second party is the UK. The third party is the collective union of Europe all together put together. On one hand, on the other hand, you have Russia. All of them are not in Niger, will not be in Niger for God and country. No, they are there for economic reasons. America, Europe, and France are feeling the pain of the dominance of Russia in their energy requirements. 80% of the energy requirement in, in Europe comes from Russia. Therefore, they are looking for a way out. The only way out they had was they funded a so-called pipe, AKK file of gas, running through Niger right into Europe so that it would checkmate the excesses and the dominance of Russia in supplying energy. This is the great opportunity for Russia to ensure that that project will not go on. America, Europe, and France will have to continue depending on Russia's gas and energy for any time to, for, for, for a long, very, very, very long time to come. Therefore, it's a, it's a convergence of hypocrisy, cherry picking, wickedness, man's inhumanity to man, and power against weakness. They are feasting on Niger simply because they are fighting a proxy war. Niger is inconsequential if, they had no, if there was no uranium, uranium in, in, in Niger. If there was no this pipeline of gas in Niger, it would have been nothing. When you say liberating Niger, I just laugh before I come to comment on it. What are you liberating there? Niger is the second poorest country in the world. Their per capita is virtually below zero life if you compare to any of the international currencies. Their educational sector is virtually zero. Health sector virtually zero. No agriculture, nothing. They have not been liberated of hunger, of starvation, of backwardness, of ignorance, of, 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 of environmental challenge. They are coming to liberate them, to liberate their own uranium. They are coming to destroy them. They are coming to annihilate them. They are coming to exterminate them. They are coming to obliterate them simply because of man's inhumanity to man. They have refused to learn a lesson in Afghanistan. After decades of war, they ran out. America has forgotten how it went. It's a small country, Somalia. During Mohammed Farah ID, during uh, 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 those presidents, they went into, uh, into Somalia and they ran out. Their militaries were being dragged in the city of Somalia. Have they forgotten about that? Mr. Have they forgotten how they created millions of orphans Mr. in Iraq, in Iran, in uh, Syria? 
Mr. Shehu, apologies for, for, inter yeah. uh, for interrupting, but we do have three minutes with you. I'd like no, to okay. give you the opportunity no to give us your, uh, um, what you think the solution and the way forward best approach would be regarding the situation, please. The solution is that uh, ECOWAS, through its own chairman, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, should look inwards. They should retract. They are already at war with uh, Niger. They have cut up light, closed all borders, placed all other embargoes on them, air, sea, land embargo. This is clinically war. It's a clinical war. Clearly a war is already happening in, 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 in Niger. Echoes and Tinubu should look back, look inwards, retract, become prisoners of history, avoid being prisoners of geography, think wisely, Act wisely, behave wisely before it is too little too late. Otherwise, this will be the end of a course. There are already nine countries that will willingly opt out of a course. And if nine countries go out of a course, what will remain of a course will be the dream of daydreamers, the pain of the painful, and the stupidity of the stupid will be the only thing remaining. But just since ECOWAS is relatively divided on this quickly, do you think the AU should be the one doing the mediation at this point in time? Briefly, please. AU are also an appendix. There is a clear, direct, indirect, tangential, and linear relationship between AU and ECOWAS. They will do nothing different from ECOWAS. There is nothing like, like, like mate, what are you mediating? It's laughable when you send the Sultan of Sokoto a retired brigadier general, Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, a former military, all of them beneficiaries of a coup to go and negotiate with coup plotters. It's really laughable. Mm. It's ironical. And it shows how, how, how daft some people are in policy formulation and the execution. Well, uh, Mardi Shehu, uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for the conversation. And we can only uh, watch as uh, the situation continues. Thank you so much for joining. Gentlemen, good day, my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, anointed lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, good day my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, anointed lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about. I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. 
So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.